Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Waves from Slidenode here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can read data from internal storage in Android. Or in other words, read data from the primary memory. In the last video, we talked about how we can save data to our internal storage. So there, we used an activity which is called activity underscore main dot xml. You had the username, you had the password, and when you hit the save button, the data was saved to the internal storage. Here. We're gonna work with activity underscore second dot xml where I have the load button same username and password this time they are empty when I click load over here that's gonna load the data the username and the password into the appropriate fields so let's see this load button in more detail I'm gonna double click this so you guys notice there's an on click attribute that calls the load method so let's take a look at this load method it's inside second activity dot java so here inside the load method I need to write code to load the file so the first thing I need to do to read the file is to open a reference to file input stream. So I'm going to say open file input and this is going to ask me the name of the file from where I want to read which would be wivs.txt in my case. Now make sure that while saving the data and while loading the data the file names are the same. So if you go and see in my case in main activity.java I have saved the file into wivs.txt and that's exactly where I'm trying to read stuff from. So that is one of the things. You need to keep in mind now this is gonna give me a file input stream so I'm gonna say file input stream file input stream equals to open file input now, as you guys notice there is a nice error over here let's press control 1 and say surround with try catch now it is not necessary that this file exists right there may be a case where you don't find the file so in that case this exception will be thrown and hence you need to have a try catch statement that covers your app from crashing so now let's try to perform the read operation. I'm going to say file input stream dot read. Now as you guys notice this is pretty weird. You notice that there is a read method that gives some kind of integer. And that there's a read method that takes a byte array, gives you some kind of integer. It reads a byte and some start count. And you guys want string data. What this thing is doing is all about bytes and integers. So what is going on? See the file is stored in the form of webs 1 to 3. This is what you see when you open the file in notepad. But what is actually contained in the file is this ASCII code values for each of those characters that you store because this is input stream. Remember in Java, input stream and output stream are always working with this kind of data at the lower levels. Whereas the readers and writers are always working at this kind of data on the lower levels. I'll be talking about the input and output stream methods and their classes and APIs in a lot more detail in my Java videos. So if you guys are not sure about this, you can go there and check them out. So here I'm going to simply say read. So this is going to give me one byte and it's going to tell me if that byte was read successfully. For example, if the file was if one byte was read successfully, this should give me 118. Otherwise, it's going to give me minus 1 if the file is completely empty. So I got to make sure I check this. I'm going to have a variable over here that's going to be called read. And this variable will be defined above. So I'm going to say int read equals to minus 1. So remember, we want to keep reading stuff as long as it does not reach minus 1, which means we reach the end of the file. So I'm going to have a while loop over here that does that. I'm going to say while and I'm going to put this entire thing, remove the semicolon. Now obviously we need a boolean condition over here. So what I'm going to do is first execute this complete expression by putting this inside a parenthesis. I'm going to say something like this. Now what I'm trying to say is read should contain file input stream dot read methods results I'm gonna compare that to minus one by saying not equals to minus one that means read stuff as long as the value of this variable read is not equals to minus one and that's exactly what I'm trying to do over here so there's again an error over here as you guys notice you can say unhandled exception blah 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 now reading again can cause an exception maybe your app your device just reboots while you're trying to read in the middle of the file something like that so you gotta make sure that you handle the exceptions I'm gonna again say add catch clause to surrounding try and this throws an IO exception which means there was some problem while reading the file so inside this method I'm gonna have a string buffer that's gonna append the data I'm gonna say string buffer buffer is new string buffer now why would I do string buffer that's one another question if you guys probably have string is not gonna allow me to modify it directly but string buffer let me directly modify it so what I'm gonna do is use this buffer say buffer dot 
a bend this is exactly what I wanted to do I wanted to add each byte to this string buffer so I'm gonna say append and something like this read over here and that takes care of adding the data so let's again take a look at what happened over here first thing this gets executed over here because this is inside parentheses which means it says file input stream dot read which is gonna give me 118 that's gonna go inside this read variable since 118 is not equals to minus 1 that 118 will be added to our string buffer then 105 118 122 and then it's gonna go all the way to minus 1 and this is the reason why I have the while loop now remember here we are trying to add the byte directly or in other words this is actually a number right the read is actually an integer so I'm gonna type cast this to a character so that from 118 I get this value V over here and then it's gonna be like V I V Z and so on so that is how things will work when you type cast this to a character so everything is done right now let's just print this out using a log statement and see if we're actually able to read it so at this point what I have inside this string buffer is something like this which is a single string which says wiv space 1 to 3 now you and I know very well that the first part of the string is wiv which is the username the second part of the string is actually the password so here we gotta have to go and modify this so what I'm gonna do is find the edit text that we need so let me create those edit text here at the top first so now let's try to split this single buffer which contains this complete string waves123 into the username and the password so I'm gonna say string text1 which is the username that is gonna be buffer dot this substring method as you guys remember lets us directly create substring so I'm gonna say substring from the start index which is 0 in our case right the end index is the index of this space over here so we need to first find that index now remember I could directly say 4 or 5 over here but that will make it very limited because the username might be something like this so in that case you gotta make sure that you find the index of the space over here so I'm gonna define that by saying something like this I'm gonna say buffer dot index of and I'm gonna give the space now this index of method gives me the position number where the space is present so what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna say start from 0 go all the way up to this position number and this would be my username and that's exactly what this buffer dot substring method does over here again put a semicolon at the end now I'm gonna say string text 2 then I'm gonna say buffer dot substring from start so in this case I need to start from the second part which is this space over here all the way to the end of the string so here I'm gonna again put this buffer dot index of space over here and that pretty much takes care of things now I might have to put a plus one over here because things are counted like this this is the zeroth place one two three four five six seven eight so space eight I think we should start from here which means buffer dot index of space is gonna give me seven over here and buffer dot index of space plus one is gonna give me eight over here and hence we need to put a plus one over here and that takes care of everything so now I'm gonna just use the edit text so that should take care of things pretty much now I could do some validation over here by checking whether they are empty strings or something but I'm not gonna do that so this would say that load was successful at this point everything looks pretty good let's run this and see if this thing works so here my emulator is up and running now before we do anything let's go to B and try to see what happens when we try to load data when nothing is there I'm gonna click load over here and it says load successful which is actually a bad message we should have actually had an if else condition over here that tests if the data is empty or not if the data was empty it means nothing was loaded otherwise it should indicate that the data was loaded successfully which of course I have not done over here so let's go to the previous try to save the data here so here I'm gonna put the username as something like webs over here the password as something like ABC DEF kind of stuff and then I'm gonna hit save over here which is gonna perform the first part saving that data data slider dot waves dot files now I go to B over here and now when I hit load over here as you guys notice the data has been loaded successfully this time which means all the read is happening perfectly the way we want things to happen again you could go ahead and see what happens where the files are located you just minimize this go to DDMS perspective select the slidener.wivs process it's inside data slash data 
slash slidenote.wivs slash files and there you go that's my wivs.txt so let's actually extract this file or pull this file into our device I'm gonna say pull this file put this inside my music folder over here just save so now if I go to music pull the wivs.txt as you guys notice there you go wivs and abcdef the password separated by a space from the username and that's exactly the logic I use while extracting data from things so this is how internal storage works in Android now let's actually see one thing before we actually quit the video and run off I wanna see what happens to the data if we try and clear the apps data so I'm gonna go to my home screen here then try and reach settings from your home screen in your emulator so there you go settings right there go to the app section here so inside my all over here I'm gonna try and find my app so here if you guys notice there's my app which is Wibs place with files let's open it and try to see what happens when we clear the data so I'm gonna hit clear data but before that keep a good eye over here slide dot Wibs cache files Wibs or txt so let's say clear data and then find out what happens it says all the data will be deleted permanently click OK and as you guys notice the files disappears which means you uninstall the app again if you say uninstall over here the complete folder over here it's gonna disappear so I'm gonna say uninstall click OK and as you guys notice the complete folder vanishes over here on the left side which means your data exists only as long as the user has not cleared the data or uninstalled the app so I hope you guys have understood something about internal storage how to read write stuff if you guys like what you saw please subscribe to this channel like this video share this video let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and we'll catch you guys in the next video when we talk about cat storage in Android in the meantime have a nice day